What's up guys, it's Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded. I'm here with Jedi BJJ. He came here from Vegas to visit me here at Glory Martial Arts Center here in New York City. We've been following each other for a while and uh, we're finally gonna do a collaboration. Yes sir. Um, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Yes, and don't beat me up too hard, okay? Now before we get started, check out the gear me and Jedi are wearing. Thank you X Martial for sponsoring this video. X Martial is a fast growing MMA brand. They specialize in quality rash guards and shorts with some of the coolest and most unique designs that reflect your personality and adds fun to your training. You might have seen their iconic designs already online such as Starlox, Pokemon, Tuxedo, or Goku. No matter your level, there's something for everyone. They also sell equipment to help you improve your training like the Grip Strengthener or Split Trainer while offering great discounts, always bringing out new designs to keep things fresh. You can check them out in the link in the description box below. So even though Jedi is a BGJ guy, his striking is still really good and he asked me as someone with more striking experience to critique him and show him a few techniques after sparring. You could check all that out including us sparring with MMA gloves, shoe boxing, and pure grappling over on his channel at Jedi Does BGJ. So looking over this footage, I would tell Jedi to develop a habit of hitting back when he gets hit. You can see I've been landing a few low kicks but he was eating them and not striking back. The hit back can be as simple as low kicking back, a body kick, or punches, but the reaction has to be immediate. I will point out examples later in the video when I get hit and hit back immediately. For example, Jedi lands a nice body kick here, and I immediately fire back with a jab to low kick to even out the score. Again here, counters my cross with another left body kick, and you can see my response is a bit delayed, but I hit back to the inside rear leg. Another thing I've noticed is that Jedi is throwing his kicks without a setup, which gives me plenty of time to defend or counter. See here, he throws the inside low kick with no setup, I dodge and countered with my own low kick. When kicking, try to throw it as a counter. For example here, I brushed his left body kick into my low kick. Sometimes I'll throw it without a setup, but you can see that I followed up with a punch or a punch to low kick combination after. Finally, another simple way to set up the low kick is to kick while your opponent punches or immediately after. But actually, Jedi already knows that because he countered my cross earlier with his left body kick. He just needs to be patient and do that more. Let's look at his cross one more time. Jedi is doing a good job by extending his cross and pulling his left shoulder back for full extension, but you can see his head is behind his knee line, which means he is leaning back when he is throwing his cross. This will not only take away power, but take away his reach. If you look at some examples in the top left of me here throwing my cross, I do the opposite. Not only do I commit and put my weight forward, I even overcommit. You can see my head is over my knee line. Now overcommitting is not good if you don't have a follow-up exit plan because you will lose balance and get countered. But because I know the rules, I can break the rules and I exit off with a low kick. Here's another example. I overcommit on my cross, which gives me the extra reach to land my cross, and I exit off to the side. In fact, Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao also does this, if you watch their footage. But because there is no kick in boxing, they quarter turn to exit off. And another combo where I use my kick to set up my punch, which sets up another kick. Another tip for throwing the cross is to take your head off center line. You can see that we both threw a cross, but I took my head off center line and slipped his punch while his head was on center line for my cross to land. Here is another example of why you should take your head off center line when throwing the cross, and always following up with a low kick after you punch. Good left body kick again by Jedi, one of his best attacks and counters. He should definitely keep using that every time I try to punch. And a beautiful timing for the single leg takedown. As I punched, Jedi changed levels and shot for the single. Very good control of my leg and takes me down. I quickly transitioned to the kick guard to try to take the back, but I couldn't finish the back take with the gloves and sugar guards, so I bailed out and stood back up. And that was the end of round one. Let's go round two. Once again, if you don't have the speed, set up the low kick or you'll get countered. Here's another example of how Jedi could have landed his cross if he put his weight forward and into that cross. And again, you guys get the point now. Some nice footwork and head movement here by Jedi. And this video could have been titled BJ YouTuber Knocks Out MMA YouTuber. Very good timing on a knee by Jedi as I shot for a takedown. An inch forward and that knee would have cracked me. Fortunately, I do like to go for the double leg takedown with my head on the inside where I take my head off center line. Just like a regular cross, Jedi should have taken the head off center line on the Superman cross as well. Take a look at how I throw my Superman cross. My head is way off to the left, which also gives me more bounce on my one-legged punch. And a head on the inside double from me 
I didn't want to play into Jedi's dangerous guards, so I immediately stood up and started ground and pounding. Jedi did a great job stepping on my hips and keeping me away. Then as soon as I got close enough, he sat up for the single leg takedown. Again, I didn't want to mess around with his BGJ, so I turned away and wiggled my leg free and ran. Here I did a little bait and hit, ran to the right and as Jedi chased, he spun into my back fist. And a regular head on outside double leg here. Once you kick low multiple times, you should fake and go up high. Jedi makes good use of the long guard and 360 block my overhand punch here. Jedi could have landed his cross here if he extended his cross fully. And bam, he does finally extend and catches me with a good cross. When throwing the jab, you can also kick your head off center line. So back to what I was saying way earlier in the first round, if you get hit, you need to hit right back whether that's just kicking back with a low kick or blasting that cross down the middle. Now as the person kicking or attacking, you should always anticipate that counter strike and be ready to dodge or block. I missed my low kick here and anticipated that Jedi would move forward to counter so I was ready with my side kick. And round 3. We up the speed and intensity just a bit. Very nice sidekick by Jedi here as I was moving in. And a good strategy by Jedi. I caught his teeth. Wanted to rush in for a counter, but he spun and threatened a spinning back fist, which stopped me from committing. Same thing happens, I caught his teeth, but Jedi doesn't threaten me with the spinning back fist, so I waited, waited, and shot for the back take. Jedi has good takedown defense, so instead of fighting for the takedown, I bailed on it and exited it off with a high kick. When disengaging from a grappling exchange, always, always keep your hands up. Here's another instance where Jedi needed to anticipate the counterpunch after kicking. Guys, look at the gap between my chin and shoulder here on my Superman cross. And once again, make sure to keep your hands up after disengaging from a grappling exchange. Hope you guys enjoyed this collaboration. Who else do you want to see me collaborate with? Let me know in the comments below. And also, don't forget to go to Jedi Does Jiu Jitsu and watch me and Jedi do shoot boxing rounds, pure grappling rounds, and MMA rounds with MMA gloves.